Number four, first baseman, Drew Rancatori. Number the catcher, Sean Jewett. Left fielder, Kevin Galloway. Okay, good. Number two, the shortstop, Cole Glassberg. Number eight, third baseman, Ben Fink. Number one, second baseman, Andrew Sternick. Also with post 77 tonight, number 11, Owen Ward. Number three, Louis Benison. Number 12, Manny Tomaselli. Number nine, Dante Diabondo. And number 27, Lawrence Tang. Post 77 is coached by Jake Obed. Assisted by Andrew Kine, Dylan O'Leary, and John Gavino. Now for introducing Hudson Post 100. Number eight, Matt Lowe. There's not much slack on the wire mics. Number nine, Tyler Ogerholm. Number 11, Kevin Papali. That can be low man. Oh, nice. Huh? That can be low man. Tonight's starting lineup for Post 100. Number 15, wow. second baseman, Sam Stout. Number two, the shortstop, Michael Ryan. Number one, first baseman, Michael Shave. Number 12, the pitcher, Noah Stewart. Number 16, the catcher, Matt Gerard. Number seven, left fielder, Tommy Goyette. Number three, third baseman, Chris Lennox. Number 20, right fielder, Sean Reynolds. It's a shelf there. Number 6, the center fielder, Thomas DiBattista. Post 100 is coached by Ryan Bowen, assisted by Luke Chason and Ben Palatino. And now to honor America, we ask that you please rise for the playing of our national anthem. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA TV in Ashland, HCAM in Hopkinton, or HCAT in Hollison. It's the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. And tonight, they take on Hudson Post 100 here in Hudson, Massachusetts, at the beautiful Riverside Park. It's 10 and 0 post 77 and 9 and 2 Hudson post 100. And we are set to go here from Riverside Park. And we will take you through the Ashland post 77 lineup in just a moment. Noah Stewart is on the mound for Hudson. Nick Calabrese, the right fielder, steps in for post 77. Wide up and the pitch. It's a strike. And it's 0 and 1. The post-77 lineup is leading off. Right fielder Nick Calabrese batting second. Center fielder Brendan Grover as that pitch is up high, one and one. Batting third is the pitcher Dom Cavanaugh. Hitting cleanup first baseman Drew Rancatori. Batting fifth is the catcher Sean Jewett. Hitting sixth left fielder Kevin Balowitz. Wind up and the pitch fouled away, one and two. Hitting seventh is shortstop Cole Glassburn. Hitting eighth third baseman Ben Fink. Batting ninth, second baseman Andrew Sternick for post 77. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad, Steve Watson on the call as Noah Stewart set to deliver the next pitch. 
And this is hit up the middle and grabbed by the shortstop. Throw to first. It's in time. Six to three goes Calabrese. One away with the Hudson defense. I welcome in Larry Sacklad. Hey, Thomas. At third base, Chris Lennox. Michael Ryan, who just made that play at shortstop, Framingham State. Sam Stout at second base. Wait for this pitch. Ball high. Michael Chaves at first base in left field. Tommy Goyette, Tommy D. Batista in center field. That's a mouthful. Sean Le Reynolds in right field, catching Matt Garrard. The ball. Noah Stewart on the mound. There you go. Hudson defense. All right. Thank you very much, Larry. Wind up and the pitch. Fouled away into the backstop. Two and one. So two and one count on Brendan Grover. Post 77 got an impressive win last night on their home turf against North Chelmsford. A three to two final in that one against a very good North Chelmsford team. That pitch is down low. That'll make the count three and one on Brendan Grover. I think you'll notice immediately right off the bat the uh, height of the pitching mound here in Hudson compared to the Ashland Middle School, little baby hill. Ball and four. that pitch is down low. There's ball four, one out walk. It was a good game pitch last night by Matt Tomaselli, Louis Dennison, and coming in, coming in to close, Luke Gustafson. Tom Cavanaugh steps in, the pitcher. And it certainly was a very well-pitched game, a good combination effort for post-77. As that pitch is down low, checking at first, rudder back safe. Lights starting to come on here at Riverside Park. Beautiful facility here in Hudson. Stewart working from the stretch, wind up and the pitch. There's a strike, 0-2. We hope you like our camera angle here tonight. We debated for about an hour and a half whether to be on top of the dugout, up in the press box, or right where we are right now. I think it's pretty good. Wide up and the pitch runner taking off from first and an easy steal for Grover. That's a great pitch to steal on that slow breaking pitch. A two and one count now on Kavanaugh. Time called by the catcher, Matt Girardi, wants a word with Noah Stewart. Tom Cavanaugh has hit pretty well this season, a 429 heading into this week, 579 on base percentage. And that is certainly a couple of reasons why you want him in your lineup, regardless if he's pitching or not. You, I'm going to ask Dr. Watson a question here. Um, you always got to be... Wondering on an easy steal like that whether the first base coach is picking up the catcher signals. It's possible, and that's what that conference may have been about. Two and two count now on Kavanaugh. There was no delay, it was just a straight out. Yeah, straight out seal, no throw, nothing. Stewart takes a long look at second and deals upstairs. That'll fill up the count on Kavanaugh. Stewart seems to have a decent fastball, not like the kid McCormick, McNamara from last night's game. Wind up and the pitch. Down low, there's another walk. Two on with one out. A beautiful evening here in Hudson. Temperatures in the low 80s to start this game. Drew Rankatori, the first baseman, will step in. I don't think his groin is going to heal be before the end of the summer. It started to affect him the last three weeks of the high school season, but to watch him run down at first base is, well, be charitable, a little painful. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. Oh, and one is the count. Cat and mouse game going on to shortstop. That's a ball. A little low there from Stewart. The bad body language out there, Steve, yeah? 
so far. They're clearly balls. There's nothing close about it. Nope. Two on, four post 77, one out in the inning. Wind up and the pitch. Down low. Two and one. Mike Ryan, the shortstop, used to pitch for, uh, used to play for uh, Nakona Baseball, an alumni. I thought he was going to St. Anselm's, but the information I have is Framingham State. Never called me to ask whether he's switching. Swing and a miss there. Checking at second, runner slides back safe. Two and two. Temperature right now reading at 84 degrees. It was certainly a bit of a hot one today. Wind up and the pitch. Swing and a miss, and he's out. And the runner from second will advance to third. So Grover advances to third on the slight mishap by Gerard behind the plate. Rankatori strikes out two away, runners on the corners, and Sean Jewett, who's been red hot with the bat coming up to the plate. Can't get any hotter than him. That was a bad pitch that Drew Rankatori swung at, but really heads up, base running. Wind up and the pitch. Breaking ball in there for a strike. And it looks like they have the run from first and a pickle. And the ball's thrown in to center field. And a run will score. one nothing. post 77. Brandon Grover comes around to score on the errant throw. Kavanaugh up to second, got caught in a bit of a pickle, and that allowed Grover to score. And we saw that trick a couple times from post-77 last year, Larry. Yeah, I mean, the intentional pickle, and uh, they got the benefit of a uh, an airmail ball from the catcher. Stewart set to deal. There's a strike. Expect a, a very uh, chirpy game from both dugouts, and perhaps even chippy. Teams do not... Uh, have a lot of love for each other. Big lead by Kavanaugh, that pitch up high. One and two. Well, Sean Jewett got a little talking to from the uh, base umpire last night for some uh, gesticulations at second base. Swing and a miss, and it briefly got away from the catcher. Throw to first is high. Pulled the first baseman off the back, but he was able to land back in time for the third out, but post 77 does play to run, and they lead it one to nothing as we head to the bottom of the first on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. We are set for the bottom of the first inning. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad, Steve Watson on the call for Ashland Legion Baseball. Cameron Tabo on camera for us this evening here at Riverside Park in Hudson. Let's take a look at the Hudson Post 100 lineup. Their head coach is Luke Chasen, and the lineup consists of the second baseman leading off, Sam Stout, batting second, the shortstop, Michael Ryan, hitting third, the first baseman, Michael Chaves, cleanup, pitcher Noah Stewart, hitting fifth is the catcher, Matt Gerard, batting sixth is the left fielder, Tommy Goyette, hitting seventh is the third baseman, Chris Lennox, hitting eighth is right fielder, Sean Reynolds, and batting ninth, center fielder, Thomas DiBattista, for post 100 with the post 77 defense here is Larry Sacklack. Some familiar faces out there. Ben Fink at third base, Cole Glassburn at shortstop. Andrew Sternick at second base, Drew Rankatori at first base from left to right. Kevin Bailowitz, Brandon Grover, Nick Calabrese. Catching tonight is Sean Jewett for Dominic Cavanaugh. And there you have it, the post 77 defense and a few notable absences. Jackson Horning, I believe, on vacation, I would say. In the say. Dominican Republic. <laughs> There's no vacations. Yeah, I know. Come <laughs> on. Oh, we didn't approve of that, did we? No, no, didn't sign up. <laughs> and the DR, I said he was in the mini bar at one of those resorts. Yeah, don't be touching those. No. Sam Stout steps in to face Dom Cavanaugh, who has been brilliant on the rubber this season. Swing and a miss. Well, that ball rode right in on the hitter. It was a good thing that we aren't, we aren't playing in zone four. He, he'd probably miss like 12 games. <laughs> Dom yeah, Dominic uh, and I talked before the game. He throws about 70% two-seam, four-seam fastballs. And 
This is hit high in the air in the infield and ranging way to his left is the shortstop Cole Glasper to make the catch one away. 30% curveballs and I know it doesn't equal 100% but occasionally he'll uh, drop in the change up on a left-handed hitter so that's his repertoire. Michael Ryan the shortstop will step in. Let's take a look at the numbers for Dom Cavanaugh. So far this season for post 77, two wins, no losses. He's thrown 11 and a third of an inning, a 123 ERA, 10 strikeouts on the season for Kavanaugh. That pitch outside. 1 and 0 oh on Ryan. Did you know Mike Ryan has got a very nice mom, Sandy? I didn't. I, I've known her for years. Wind up and the pitch. And that is just a tad low, 2 and 0. Oh. Marlboro High School grad, 2018. Attending Framingham State. And this is hit into right field. That'll trickle in for a base hit. A one-out single for the shortstop. Number one, first baseman, Michael Chaves. That'll bring up Michael Chaves, the first baseman. A whole lot of college athletes on this Hudson team this year. Does that mean they're smarter than the Ashland kids or...? Eh, maybe. <laughs> they got 13 college kids to be exact. Michael Chaves attending Worcester State. Checking at first, runner back safe. Up, oh, there's warnings already. No chirping. Didn't take the home plate umpire long to try to take control of this game. I think there might have been some chirping back and forth between the dugouts, and that's what might have drawn the umpire's attention. It's, it's the job of the home plate umpire to kill that stuff early. There's a strike, 0-1. Yeah, you can't let that stuff rage on, because then you as the plate umpire lose control of the game, and if you lose control of the game, then quite frankly, you're not doing your job. So that's a good job by him. Fouled away, 0-2. And I know that having gone through that myself, that's not a few times. Oh, I'm oh, sure. Oh, last night included, by the way. So. Oh, boy. <laughs> Were they riding you pretty good? Well, one coach in particular. It's the last <laughs> thing that you want to be dealing with when it's 90 and humid out, you know? No. Checking at first. Nearly got him, but just safe is Ryan. What is the magic word before you give him the well-oiled bump? It's usually that's enough. That will usually do it. Swing and a miss. Two away. That'll bring up Noah Stewart, the pitcher. Number 12, the pitcher, Noah Stewart. What about turning the back and muttering after you said? That's I had that enough. happen last night. Oh. <laughs> I think when that happens, you can expect the umpire to get right in that person's face to confront them about it and not let it happen again. Just outside. Well, Chaves was the victim of that breaking pitch by Kavanaugh. Two and oh now, another outside pitch there. One on, two outs. Kavanaugh doesn't have a long delivery. He's a very compact, almost he pushes the ball up there, but doesn't have a lot of velocity. Ryan's got a pretty good lead over there. Good check and move. Nice pickoff move there by Kavanaugh once again, almost getting the runner. Drew Rancatori is not used to playing first base, so. And that'll make the count three and oh. Tom Kavanaugh last season had a 267 ERA and 18 and a third pitch for post 77. And it's a walk. So two on, two outs for post 100. That'll bring up Matt Gerard, the catcher. Last night, Steve, we had uh, Mike Whalen as an umpire. What's his resume? His uh, fantastic ped pedigree. Well, he, he was the president of the Central Mass Baseball Umpires Association for the past two seasons. This is hit foul out of play. Oh, Did and he go one. Umpire at a high level, like. Uh, Triple-A or independent ball or something? Not that I'm aware of, no. Oh. He is a great umpire, though. Unfortunately, I've only had the chance to work with him once in my eight years doing it. Well, he had control of the game. 
<laughs> the first pitch. I'm not surprised. That uh, sounds like him. And this is up the right side, picked up by the second baseman. Throw to first, they'll get the out. Four to three to end inning number one. A one to nothing lead for post 77 as we head to the second inning on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the second inning, post 77 coming back up to the plate, up one to nothing. Due up is six, seven, and eight. Kevin Balowitz, Cole Glassburn, and Ben Fink to face Noah Stewart. So post 77 started off the first inning with a nice manufactured run, a ground out, a walk, and then another walk that put two on. Drew Rancatori struck out, but then Grover stole a base, and there was an errant throw that allowed Grover to score and Kavanaugh to advance. And now Kevin Balowitz will step in. He's out in left field today. Play in place of uh, Sam Farrell, who you watched our opening broadcast with playing left field. Balowitz hitting a 333 so far this season. Takes that one low. Stewart set to deal. In there for a strike, one and one. High strike, Steve. Yeah. Look good. Okay. Wind up and the pitch. Strike two. Balowitz, Glassburn, and Fink do up this inning. Stewart to the set, up high. Two and two. Leg lift and the pitch. That'll fill up the count. There's a pattern emerging with Stewart. It's, he gets ahead of the hitters, and now he wants to throw the ball through uh, the backstop. He tries to get fancy. Can't do that. You just have to pitch. Yeah, I mean. It's all there is to it. Just got ahead. Keep going. Swing and a miss. Like that. Out number one. Cole Glassburn will it's step two. in. Cole a couple nice hits last night, Tom. Certainly did. He was pretty solid in the middle infield for post 77. Well, he did have an error. We had a call on him. Last he he night. did have one. He did have one. I let him have it in between innings. <laughs> you let him have it. I, I don't, did. I, I don't believe I, that. I wrote on this piece of paper in my notebook the letter E, and the next page I flipped over, it said six. He just nodded his head. You know what? One and one. It's a horrible Ashley Middle School field. And this is up the right side. That's a fair ball. Glove by the first baseman. He'll step on the bag for the three unassisted ground out. Two away. That'll bring up Ben Fink, the third baseman. I was talking to the gentleman that manicures his field, and we were talking about the middle school field. He says, it's a pretty horrendous venue. <laughs> I said, you're absolutely right. Almost lost the kid's eye last night. That pitch was down low, 1-0 and oh on Fink. Fink so far on the season, hitting a 143 and just seven at-bats. His pitching outing was uh, stunning. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. Yeah, pitching wise, he's thrown seven innings and has a zero ERA, so I'd expect to see Fink on the mound quite a bit this That's season. That's more than stunning. <laughs> I would say so. <laughs> I Down think he low. threw a shutout in that game. He did. <laughs> I must say, post 77 certainly has good depth when it comes to pitching. There's a strike, two and two. We have a very competent scoreboard operator here down at uh, Riverside Park, Riverside Field. Wind up and the pitch, Ooh. just inside, full count. Stewart set to deal. 
Down low, and he'll draw the two-out walk. It'll bring up Andrew Sternick, the second baseman. Second baseman, Andrew Sternick. So, Steve, he's got the eight-hitter. It's a three-and-two pitch, and he dirts one. Yep. Rather than challenging him. Third walk of the game. Yeah, well. That's what happens when you try and get fancy. Sternick hit a 228 this past spring for Ashland High School. Wind up and the pitch. In there for a strike. Kid possesses it better than average curveball, so. Stewart takes a look at first and is set to deliver. Down low, gets away from the catcher, an easy advance here for Fink. So pass ball there allows Fink to advance. Well, Sean Jewett should notice that, that anything past him, it's not gonna go to the screen. Some thick grass behind. Yep. That ball just died right there. Something to be alert to. A really, really experienced catcher will patrol that before the game. There's a strike, one and two. Post 77 leading one to nothing here in the top of the second. Stewart takes a look at second and deals. Inside and low. Nice job by Gerard behind the plate, keeping it in front of him, two and two. You got a really airmail one to hit this backstop. It's about three times the uh, area that Ashland Middle School has. Set to deal. Fouled into the backstop. Count remains two and two. Nick Calabrese on deck, waiting for his chance to make a contribution. Not a monetary contribution. Stewart deals. Just low. That'll fill up the count. Stewart has thrown a good amount of pitches so far in these first couple innings. And this one's fouled away. It's got to be over 30 pitches, I would think. Three walks. Three walks, three Ks. It's got to be up over 30. At least. Minimum. The hot night, we'll see how this takes a toll on these pitchers. Runner taking off, and that is going to be a walk anyhow. And a stolen base for Ben Fink. That's what you get as a pitcher when you take yourself out of the game. He didn't even, didn't even check the runner at second base. And Matt Gerard wants a conversation with Noah Stewart, probably to talk about exactly that. Four walks now. Yeah, he's certainly... Uh, Through not even two innings. Yeah, certainly struggling a bit. And here comes... I, I mean, that's, you know, when you come to your set, you don't even take a look. First move, that runner's going to go, right? It's yeah, like, exactly. Better than a greedy lead out there. Yeah, so he's allowed four base runners all on walks. Not one hit yet. Pitcher no hitter, though. <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> Well, the umpire breaking up the conversation. But you got the top of the order coming up now. Nick Calabrese with two on and two outs. Runners on the corners, four post 77. From an umpire's point of view, Steve, what, what kind of clock is in your head before you step out? All depends on the situation. It all depends how the coach has treated you beforehand. You may have a short leash or a long leash. Down low. And the runner will take off from first. An easy advance for Sternick. And the catcher held the ball intentionally. He wanted to uh, about that. 
Yeah, he wanted to avoid, I think, another manufactured run. Yeah, yeah the, the proper rule would be a half minute on the mound. Before you make a move? Correct. Inside, two and oh. Don't notice any bullpen activity for post 100. Oh, it's still a one nothing game. Well, Stewart has good velocity, but control has certainly been an issue. Three and oh. More bo bad body language, him falling off the mound. Yeah, he's getting frustrated, but you can only be frustrated with yourself. He, he's the one who's walked with four guys. Catcher isn't doing anything. <laughs> he's just putting his glove out. It's all on the pitcher. Wind up and the pitch. That is a four pitch walk to Calabrese. The bases are loaded for Brendan Grover. There is two outs in the inning. With young pitchers, you coaches at a higher level want to look for poise. Uh, now he had first base open, so he may have said, well, maybe I'll pitch him a little close. And there for a strike. The series the last couple of years has been pretty close between Post 77 and Hudson. In fact, they have broken even three apiece in the last two years. Inside, one and one. You're right, Tom, they have split the last six in total, three aside. The last meeting was a year ago today, actually, down at Ashland Hudson, took that one two to one. Ashland did win three in a row before that, looking to get back in the win column against Hudson here. Inside, I believe we were at that two to one game. Yes, we were, as a matter of fact, I do recall. And Hudson was the only Zone 5 team to win at Ashland last year. The one and only. Ah. They still have to go to Ashland this season. Check swing, he held no three appeal. and one. Stewart's in danger of uh, taking himself out of this game or adding an extra run to Ashland's total. Well, if you're a Grover, are you swinging the bat here? No. Make me. Make me see a strike. Prove it to me. Down low, and here comes a run. 2 nothing. post 77. Stewart's looking at uh, the dugout, and that usually is a sign to the coach that, mm, I don't have it today. Nope. <laughs> Not tonight. Well, now you got Dom Cavanaugh coming up to the plate with the bases loaded. Well, two visits, I think, is going to be it, right? Well, this is the head coach now, so I think he's coming to take the ball, and he will. So we're going to see a new pitcher for Hudson post 100 as Luke Chason will take the ball from Noah Stewart, and we'll take a timeout. You are tuned into Ashland Legion Baseball on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Continuing on in the top of the second, a new pitcher for Hudson post 100 as the Hudson coaches. Just going to get things straightened out with Coach Obid to let him know what's going on. Chris Lennox is in the game at first base as Michael Chaves, the starting first baseman, has moved over to take over on the pitcher's mound. Noah Stewart struggled today, walking six, giving up two runs, one of which was earned. And this is hit right back up the middle to Chaves. Flip to first, no problem. It'll be one to three for out number three, but post 77 does plate another run and they lead it two to nothing as we head to the bottom of the second on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. We are ready for the bottom of the second. Due up for Hudson post 100 is six, seven and eight. Tommy Goy at the left fielder, Chris Lennox the third baseman, Sean Reynolds the right fielder. To face Dom Cavanaugh, a two to nothing lead for post 77 so far. Two manufactured runs have made the difference in this one. Wind up and the pitch. This is hit foul. Don't worry, don't worry. We got a fence in front of <laughs> That's us. That's true. The challenge oh, for Dom Cavanaugh one. right now is uh, he sat in that dugout for a long, long time in the top of the second inning. So let's see how sharp he is coming out of the gate. Down low, one and one. Jewett tried to steal one there. Yeah, he did uh, have to wait quite a bit to come back out. And even though it was just a run, that was a pretty long top half of the inning. One and two now. 
I can see Dom Cavanaugh being very, very dominant next year in the uh, TVL. Wind up and the pitch. Swing and a miss, out number one. That'll bring up Chris Lennox, the third baseman. No, I believe he moved over to first base uh, in that last Yeah, you are correct, you don't, are correct. Don't quote me. You are correct, have, you are absolutely 100% correct. I don't know whether that's Chaves over there uh, continuing to uh, get some warm up tosses or a new pitcher. And this is hit foul out of play, almost hit a light. Look out in the park over yeah. there. Uh, I thought for sure that was taken out of light. Yeah, well, you know what? There's hardly any Ashland fans here, so maybe they're all at home in front of their Swing and a miss. computers so watching this game. Yeah, perhaps. Maybe we can well, have one be from out the there Dominican with the, Republic. The lounge <laughs> chairs. Well, There's a good amount of fans out there in the left field area. Say hello to Jackson Horning down the Dominican Republic. Swing and a miss. Second straight strikeout for Dom Cavanaugh. That's three in the game. Number 20, right fielder. That'll bring up Sean Reynolds, Reynolds, the right fielder. Let's see if Hudson plays just like, uh, what team came in last night? North Chelmsford. Little inside there, one and oh. First four hitters could do damage. The rest of the lineup. No damage. Kavanaugh set to deliver. Two and O. Oh. Because Dom took care of Lennox and Reynolds, absolutely no problem. See what he does with uh, D. Batista. Two outs, no runners on for Hudson. Kavanaugh with the leg lift and the pitch. And this is going to take a couple hops up the middle, grab by the third baseman, throw to first, and he got him. Ben Fink ranging way to his left to make that play. A five to three out, four out number three. We will head to the top of the third. It's two to nothing, post 77 on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the third inning, four, five, and six, two up for post 77. Drew Rancatori will start things off. Michael Chaves has taken over on the mound. And the first pitch to Rancatori just a bit high, 1 and 0. Oh. What's Chaves' stat line this so far this year for 100? Just curious. I do not have that information. Okay. 2 and 0. Oh. I'm sure it's good. <laughs> he looks good. Leg lift and the pitch. And therefore, strike two and one. And I'm just thinking about the thought process with the Hudson coach. Well, I think this is a crucial game. Yeah. It could really determine who has the upper hand in the district tournament. So I think uh, they're certainly going to give Ashland everything they got today. Some other position changes for Hudson we forgot to mention. Tommy Coyette over at third base moved over from left field. And Mike Ryan took over in left field as Drew Rancatori draws a walk. That'll, that'll bring up Sean Jewett. He struck is out. Ryan still the shortstop over there? He struck, Two? Yes, he struck okay. out in his last plate appearance. Or actually, I'm not sure. It was all kinds of position <laughs> changes. We'll try let's, to fill you in the best Let's play where you want. I thought two moved over to left field, but uh, maybe not. All right. Mike Ryan is still the shortstop. I just ran in and took the position. There was some shifting going on out there. A long look at first base for Chaves. Wind up and the pitch. Outside it gets away, an easy advance for Rankatori. So Rankatori advances to second, thought about third, but he'll stay there. And advance on a wild third. And advance <laughs> on a wild pitch. The wounded giraffe. Try getting fancy there. Yeah, drop down Bounce to the that side. One. Yeah. Yeah, and you, you're at a point where you've walked seven post-77 batters. You haven't allowed a hit. It's time to throw some strikes for once. Let their fielders do something. They've done nothing all game, really. 
Shaves deals. This is hit in the air to right field, and it is going to be caught. It was a diving catch by Reynolds out there in right field, but advancing to third is Rankatori. So despite the out, the hit does pay off as it puts Rankatori at third. And that was a heck of a catch out there by Sean Reynolds. That'll bring up Kevin Balowitz, the left fielder. What do you give the right fielder for style, style points on that catch? I'll give him a 9 out of 10. Ooh. It was a good dive. I'm going to say eight and a half. Fair enough. This isn't Barstool Pizza. Oops. <laughs> Chave set to deal to Balowitz. And he'll get a piece of this one. It's foul. Knob job. Yeah, he wasn't too happy where that ball went. Ball's going to really have to go to the backstop for Rankatori to score. Chaves set to deal. Bunt pulled back, and the throw up to third is going to go into left field. Here comes Rankatori. He's going to come try to score, and the throw in is off the mark. It's 3 0 post 77. An Aaron throw from Gerard. He's having a tough time. But if that throw were online, he might have had a chance at Drew Rankatori. A one and one count on Balowitz. I don't even think you should have threw it there. I mean, rank it Why would you throw that? Right. It's clearly going back to third. And not especially your third baseman is about three feet wide of the third base, and you still couldn't even hit him either. Well, as you know, catchers are a different breed. There's a strike. Well, because some of them think that they're superheroes, Larry. Or Pudge you know? Rodriguez in disguise. Well, there's only, there's only one of him. A one and two count on Balowitz. Bases are clear, but another run is in for post 77. And this is hit in the air foul. Here's some uh, trivia question for you, Steve. Who caught Pedro Martinez in the 1999 All-Star game at Fenway Park? I'm pretty sure it was Pudge Rodriguez, wasn't it? It was Pudge Rod Rodriguez. He threw out uh, Matt Williams trying to steal second base on a strike him out, throw him out. One, two, and a foul tip into the catcher's glove for out number two. That'll bring up Cole Glassburn. Number two, the first off, Cole Glassburn. Well, post 77 certainly manufacturing the runs today. Base hits flying all over the place. Upstairs. One and O on Glassburn. Chaves deals, and this is hit foul. Look out, fans. One and one. Looks like Shaves has uh, settled things down a little bit for post 100. Here is the 1-1 one, one time called. Fielders hate pitchers that are wild. Drives them crazy. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Swing and a miss. One and two. Went for a little extra, extra sauce on that. Yep. When you put up seven walks like post 100, those fielders have been standing and They get bored out there, Larry. They get bored, yeah. And that goes for both umpires, too. They lose that sharpness. And there's strike three for out number three. We will head to the bottom of inning number three. It's a 3 nothing lead for post 77 on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Thomas D. Batista, the ninth hitter in the lineup, Ready to start things off for Hudson Post 100. 9 1 and 2 do up. Thomas D. Batista, Sam Stout, and Michael Ryan. To face Dom Cavanaugh, who's so far throwing a pretty good game. Post 77 leading 3 to nothing. And a challenge down to the first base umpire to see if he swung. And the umpire says no. 1 and 0. Oh. I think that was a hitter asking for that challenge, or was that the umpire? It was just both. Not able to see it. That's what I thought. 
Swing and a miss there, one and one. Yeah, it took the first base umpire some time to acknowledge him because he was engaged in conversation with the Hudson first base coach. So, not sure if he even saw that. Kavanaugh set for the 1-1. One, one. There's a bunt, and that is fouled off himself. So that is going to make it one and two that went right off Di Batista as he was running up the first base line. Di Batista steps back in. Down low. Two and two. Wind up and the pitch. A little bit low there, full count. Kavanaugh set to deliver. And that is a little bit low there. That's ball four, but the hitter doesn't know it. Now he does. So a walk by Kavanaugh. That's his second walk of the game. That'll bring up the leadoff man, Sam Stout. Pitch is low. Last thing a pitcher wants to do is give up a freebie to the nine hitter. And they're checking at first, and I think he got him. And the umpire says no, but boy, was that close. Safe all the way. All right. Foot got there first. I'll take your word for it. Probably had a better view than me. Sean Jewett likes to try about one of those a game. And this is blooped up foul. And it looks like the hitter tripped as he was trying to head to first. <laughs> a couple of the uh, Hudson players asking us to make sure we got that one on camera. Why? Because it was a great swing. Oh. <laughs> Good effort. Dom Kavanaugh's got a pretty darn good pickoff move. So we'll see if he goes over again. There's the one, two, swing and a miss. Oh, Out number one. That'll bring up Michael Ryan, the shortstop. He singled in his last plate appearance back in the first inning. Last time we had Dom Kavanaugh on, he came to his set at the chin, like there, it wouldn't go over. Oops, not going over now. Oof. And that must have hurt. No intent. Nope, certainly wasn't. And he's going to shake that one off. Might have got pure shoulder. It will be two on with one out, four Hudson Post 100. Certainly hope Michael Ryan's okay as the ball hit him right around the shoulder area. Michael Chaves due up next. That ball just rode in on Michael Ryan. There's really nothing he could do. Yep, sir. sometimes that just happens. I mean, Kavanaugh at times likes to throw inside, that inside heat, and sometimes he just uh, loses a bit of a grasp on the ball and it ends up in a place he really didn't intend to. Well, he talked about his two-seam fastball with me before tonight's game. That might have been a two-seam fastball that didn't... Uh, break where it wanted to. And we'll see if Michael Ryan stays in the game. It looks like he's going to. He's going to shake it off and march up to first base. Showing off some toughness there for sure. Quite the bat flip, too, he had. It's yeah. like a uh, Jose Bautista-like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame him. I'd be a little frustrated, too, because those don't tickle. So we getting back on the subject of whether Dom Cavanaugh is going to pick over. He won't do it right now. We thought if he went to the belt and stopped his, uh, where he set at the belt, he would more likely pick over. 
Two on and one out for Hudson. That pitch is down low, gets away from Jewett, and both runners are going to advance. So Kavanaugh having some struggles this inning. They did water the field before the game and looked like Jewett's feet came out from underneath him. If he had any designs at throwing down. Yeah, even if he didn't slip, I don't think he, that he, he likes really to throw had a the chance ball. anyway. He, he loves his arm. It's now two in scoring position with one out, four post 100. And this is up the left side, gloved by the third baseman. He's going to chase down the runner heading home, and he, they got him in a pickle, and he's going to lay the tag. Did he get him? And, and now there's another runner in a pickle, the throw over to second, and the runner from third trying to score, and everyone's going to end up safe. Oh. And now there's an argument that one of the runners was out, and I think it was the runner that scored because he might have run out of the base path. So the runner that scored might have run out of the base path. The umpires are going to talk about it. The Hudson coaches arguing that he remained in the base path, and they're calling him safe, so it's a 3-1 to -one game. And I think that call... And Jake Obed certainly not happy. Coach Obed out there arguing his case. It's going to be runners at second and third. A run is in. Only one out in the inning still. Four post 100. And Coach Obed getting a warning there. Well, that was certainly a uh, crazy situation. And if there was ever a time we needed an instant replay, it's right there. Or an umpire for his commentary, Steve. <laughs> right now, our rules expert, Steve Watson, listening in to the discussion here. So it's stepping in is going to be Left fielder who came into the game. All right, so here's what happened. It's not a question if he was out of the base path or not. The home plate umpire called him out on the tag. Then this pitch is in there for a strike. Following that, after all that happened, he conferred with his partner who said no. There, there was no tag, thus the runner who went home is safe. Yeah, I think the question, I mean, in my belief, the question is, was the runner tagged when he was around third base as they were chasing him back to well, the third base back? The, the home plate umpire signaled about probably halfway between home and third that he had an out. And after all that running occurred, he conferred with his partner who confirmed that there was no tag, thus the runner would be safe at home. But that, the, doesn't that sort of screw up the, the carousel? In other words, well, Fink thinks he gets him. It was so a live ball the entire doing. time, though. What's that? It, the Kiki was a live ball the entire time. The, the and Tyler Ogeholm just struck out for the second out of the that, inning. Matt okay. Gerard will step in. It's all right if he struck out. Uh, we're trying to get this down. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Fink thinks he gets him out, and he stops what he's doing, and the runner continues home. Correct. Uh-huh. So if the umpires decide, even if a, a tag was initially called, they could change that. Correct. Now, had they killed the play and the runner did not go home, then you'd probably have to put him back. You couldn't play the run. Wow. Is that rule 62.1? I have the rule book in my blue bag here, <laughs> so I'll have to look at it at some point before we get out of here tonight. I just thought at this level, where there's no instant replay, once a call is made, it's made. But apparently that's not the case. And there's strike three. Two straight strikeouts for Kavanaugh. And despite having two in scoring position with one out, only one run scores for Hudson post 100. It's a three to one post 77 lead. We'll head to the top of the fourth on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the fourth inning, a three to one lead for post 77. All kinds of pandemonium in the bottom of the third with just an absolutely insane situation. As Ben Fink steps in to face Michael Chaves, who since coming in in the second inning has pitched pretty well. There's a strike. Oh, and one. It's Fink, Sternick, and Calabrese do up for post 77. 
Dr. Finkenstein was uh, involved in that last crazy play there. One and one. He made a great play in the previous inning, charging a ball and throwing a runner out, but he got mixed up in that base running melee. Wind up and the pitch. Inside, two and one. That's one play you'll probably never see again. I would say so. I can't wait to look at that one later. And that's one that you definitely need a rules expert for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you're here, Steve. Glad you're here. That's why we That's why we paid you a big buck. That's right. Hey, good thing this, this didn't happen last night when I wasn't here. That's right. Oh, <laughs> we wouldn't have said anything. <laughs> we would have just said a run score and that's a it. A run score. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we gave a pretty good description. I mean, you, you're... Your uh, description was a little more informative, but I don't think ours was terrible. It wasn't terrible. It, 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 it was a very perplexing situation. You, you hear that, Larry? We, we bring Steve in already. And he gave us? Already he's trashing us. Well, I thought he just gave us props. He said it wasn't <laughs> terrible. That's a compliment. For Larry, that's a compliment. Well, yeah. That made good. <laughs> Runner see, on first, no out. Sternick steps in. See what kind of move Chaves has. Ooh, he was thinking, bunt there, throw down to first. Runner is back safe. And uh, Gerard, you know, the catcher on the other side, wants to show off his piece. His throws aren't accurate, though. I know, but... It's all that, if that was in target, he has him at first. Yeah, well, you know, it's, bad things can happen back-picking. <laughs> throw it in the right field. Shaves with a look at first, and will now deliver the 1-0. And this is hit high in the air above us and foul. Oh, we have a mom that uh, just grabbed her husband <laughs> to protect her. I was, about, I was about to just push you in the way of it. No, you were going to grab me and give me a hug. That's what <laughs> happened. <laughs> you know I'm scared of the dark. How many times do I have to tell you? Well, 1-1. One, one. Yeah, I'm surprised you came to the night game. Checking at first, runner back safe. He's got a very long pickoff move. The longer the the arm, the less likely you're going to get the runner. It takes a nice short throw over there. The 1-1. One, one. There's a strike. One and two. Sometimes the pitcher will go over there with a long throw call a, a dummy move to set up the runner, thinking it's, that's his best move, and he'll move his feet quickly and snap one over there and pick the runner off. Sean Babineau was notorious for that. By the way, he's starting the All-Star game in the Independent League uh, next Tuesday night. Futures uh, League. The one-two. Outside. Uh, he's doing quite well, Larry, with the Worcester Brave Farts. 5 0, 174 ERA, over 31 innings, just 17 hits allowed, five walks, pinpoint control. Yeah, I asked him. 36 last night, Ks. Hey, how come you're starting the All Star game? He goes, Did you see my numbers? Said, yeah, uh, <laughs> I'd say his numbers are pretty solid, eh? Yeah. Line up and the pitch. This is hit in the air over to right field, and it is caught. One away. We still got a no hitter going? That'll bring up Nick we Calabrese. Do. Oh, okay. <laughs> Runner on first, one out. Calabrese will step in, and that is, that is uh, certainly interesting. A no hitter, but three runs have scored <laughs> on eight walks. And <laughs> also of note, that run that scored in the bottom of the third, first time that Ashland has allowed a run here since 2016. Ah. Back to back shutouts wow. in 17 and 18 here. One run allowed in the last three trips. Was that last run earned or unearned? You can answer at the. I believe it was <laughs> unearned because it was on an errant throw. We'll wait for the next half inning. <laughs> See, I can't remember what what led to all that. I think it was unearned. No, it was a ground ball. But yeah, but, but yeah. the pickle in the rundown failed, so perhaps you would go unearned. I would say unearned. I would say lucky. How about that? Is there, right. is there such stat as a lucky run? That's how, fouled how away. How about a base hit, fellas? Or extremely unfortunate. 
Yeah, an unfortunate run. You're gonna have a to UFR. Slow this. You're gonna have to slow it's this. It's a whole down. new stat. We see. We just invented a new stat. <laughs> Baseball is a game of stats, right? Why don't you slow this down in the editing room and give it a score? It's five two something. Five two five six two three four five. Up high. One and one. Again, Garad pulled that one down like he was going to throw down to first base. So so this is an umpire question, Steve. I call them cheats when a uh, catcher tries to frame a pitcher, pull it in. How many do you give a catcher a game? If they're pulling it, they won't get it. If it's a good frame job, they'll get it. But the, the, the key is you got to make it subtle. You can't make it too obvious. I think pulling is too obvious. And Jewett likes to pull in. Yeah, if, if you're pulling, you're not going to get it. If you're framing, you have a higher chance. Is it just a simple twist of the wrist yep. for a frame? The, the key oh. is not too much movement. That pitch outside, three and one now on Calabrese. Larry, I say for a catcher, the more they move the glove, the worse off they are. Okay. So if they're, they're pulling it up, the up is going to say, I'm not giving this kid anything. Correct. I think that actually makes it worse. Here's the 3-1, and this is fouled away into the parking lot. Full count. So do you, do you, do you ever have a dislike for a catcher that's in front of you? Like, see, I don't like this kid. I'm not giving him anything. Yes, I, yes, I do. Uh, okay. uh, catchers who move around too much. Okay. You know, it's tough for the catcher to help you out as well, try and make things look good. Fink with a lead off of first. Wind up and the pitch. Fouled away. The battle continues between Calabrese and Chavis. Especially when you're in your stance and they move and block you at the very last second. A good catch will know not to do that. So if you're looking over a particular shoulder yep. and then he moves and cuts off your yep. sight line. Exactly. Again, a good catcher won't do that, though. Chaves deals, and this is hit in the air over to right field. That'll fall in for a base hit. Lead runner Fink is going to try to head to third. He had a bit of a stumble coming off of second, but will get to third with ease. It's a one-out single for Calabrese. A, a good piece hit. of hitting there. A base hit. And the no-hitter is broken. <laughs> oh, my God. Brendan Crover will step in. Runners on the corners, one out. I think I've seen God himself. <laughs> Who would have thought a hit? An apparition, a base it, hit. It only took us eight walks to reach this point. Oh my God, a base hit. I don't know. Who would have thunk it, Larry? We didn't see one, well, we haven't seen one since last night, Dave. Well, over 24 hours ago since our last hit. You have now <laughs> seen the light. I've got religion now. That's right. You found a hit. Yes. Wind up and the pitch. In there for a strike on Grover. Oh, and one. Grover earlier in the year was killing the ball. Well, Grover today so far has walked twice and scored a run. Well, he hasn't hit the ball. I, I think getting on base is the most important thing. Wind up and the pitch. And this is going to take a very slow roll. Up the middle, grab by the shortstop, flip to second for one. Throw to first, not in time, and a run scores. Four to one, post 77. And Grover will get the RBI. And Calabrese forced out. Ben Fink comes around to score. Good underhanded toss by Ryan to a second baseman. Second baseman made a pretty good turn, but just not quick enough. And I don't know whether Ryan got spiked a little bit out there. Or he got beaned in the shoulder in his last half inning. He's having his troubles. That'll bring up Dom Cavanaugh. I think they're fixing the second base bag right yeah. now. I think it might have come out on the slide. So they're trying to make sure the base is all settled in. Well, I think the umpire, second base umpire, was going to call him safe anyway to make up for that call at home plate, the, we'll call it the Fink play. <laughs> oh, well, there was no doubt at first base. Grover well, was very I, safe. I think he was going to give it to him anyway because of that Fink he, play. He, he was safe by play. a mile, though. I, I don't, I don't like it. assumptions, Larry. All right, well, that cluster at home plate. By the way, did any of you see the All-Star game last night? No. I was working. I did not. It was a good game. 
Did One of the better up? All-Star games I've seen. Yep, watched pretty much the whole thing. Did your wife read your bedtime story afterwards? <laughs> she was watching the game with me. Oh, she, she actually enjoyed it. Oh, really? It's very entertaining baseball. Tom um, Cavanaugh steps in. Yeah, 4-3 All-Star game isn't bad. And this is hit in the air, high in the air, to left field, and taking a while to fall, but it will into the glove of Tommy Goyette for the third out of the inning. But guess what? Post 77 plates another run. They have scored one run in each of the four innings we have played. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth. It's post 77 up 4-1 to one over Hudson on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the fourth inning, six, seven, and eight due up for Hudson. Tommy Goyette, Chris Lennox, and Sean Reynolds to face Tom Cavanaugh. Cavanaugh has given up one run so far today, but it was an unearned run on that wild play that we saw last inning. Look for that in the highlight reel. Yeah, post 77 did uh, get a base hit last half inning. They did, and another run. Swing it, a miss. Some heat there by Cavanaugh. That two-seamer he's using is riding in on the Hudson hitters, right on their hands. And this is popped up, and ranging over is going to be Glasper to make the catch, one away. That'll bring up Chris Lennox. A little disadvantage for post-77. They don't practice under the lights at all, and none of their uh, high schools have lights. Well, so they have had a number of games though in venues with lights. I don't think they're too new to this. And I believe actually no, Ashland High School does not have lights. Well you've been, oh, and one. We've been the last five years. So they don't have <laughs> well lights. they got a new stadium. Oh and two. Or a new field I should say. I, I was gonna say stadium is a little bit uh, <laughs> grandiose for what that is. They have a very nice facility up there at Ashland High School. Wide up and the pitch. There's a strike for out number two. Yeah, Tom, it's a brand new stadium, multi-million dollar, taxpayer funded, right? That's yeah. right. Sean Reynolds will step in. Dom Cavanaugh, seven strikeouts so far today. You know, Tom, don't laugh. Down in Texas, high school football, they have multi-million dollar stadiums. Oh, I know. It's insane. Well, 20,000 on a Friday night. Yeah. Oof, that hit him. Well, he's trying to throw that inside heat once again, and it hits Reynolds. Thomas DiBattista will step in. When he hits you, it hurts. He's got I a really good so. fastball. You could hear that. Yeah, I know, but that two-seam fastball, and Steve probably knows it. He sees that coming. Well, I don't want to get hit by it, I'll tell you that. That's only a little bit of pain, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I think if Larry got hit by it. Oh, and Jewett loses the ball. The runner from first is going to advance to second. Then it's thrown into center field, but quickly able to get to it is Sternick. He had absolutely no chance of getting the runner, so it's no. that uh, that catcher thing, you know? <laughs> I mean, we talked about it earlier. So when you see a two-seam fastball, the pitcher's trying to get it over the heart of the plate and have it break in the inside corner, and it, bre and it breaks too much, that's on the fists, right? You can't get out of the way of it. And this is hit in the air up the right side, and it is foul. Is that what you see as an umpire, a two-seamer, riding in on a hitter? At times, yeah. Yeah. Does your uh, knee-jerk reaction when you know a guy's going to get beaned is to yell, watch out? No. No. Absolutely not. You're not nice. No, because <laughs> if you're helping him, then you're giving him the advantage. What's coming towards his dome? <laughs> That's why they have helmets, Larry. Okay. <laughs> one and one. Two outs in the inning. Two, one on for Hudson. The pitch just slow. Two and one. See, that was a Sean Jewett cheat right there. He was trying to lift the ball up. And this umpire is well, That wasn't even it. close to being a strike anyway, so. I know. I don't know what the point is trying to cheat. There is no really point. obvious. This is hit in the air over to right field and it is caught for the third out of the inning. We will sail on to the top of the fifth post 77 leading Hudson four to one on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. 
Top of the fifth inning, four, five, and six, two up, four post 77. Drew Rancatori to start things off, followed by Sean Jewett and Kevin Balowitz to face Michael Chaves, who is, came in early in this game to relieve Noah Stewart, who was struggling very much early on in the second inning. The starter, Noah Stewart, went one and two thirds of an inning, and Chaves has come in, and since that has given up two runs, but only one of those was earned. But he has certainly been a little bit more consistent than Stewart was as the first pitch to Rankatori is a strike. So do you have the rest of Hudson's schedule uh, coming up? They've had some rain outs, I'm sure. I could look that up for you. Well, you've got all the information at your fingertips. The 0-1 is high, one and one. Is there anything you question, why didn't they pitch Chaves tonight against a undefeated team and they run out Stewart? Not sure. Unless they've got Lowell coming up or something. I believe Hudson doesn't play till next Saturday. As this is hit in the air over to center field and it's caught by De Batista, one away. Uh, the home plate umpire made that call an out call. It's Sort of the rules of the road. That's the proper mechanic. So with no runners on base, it is the job of the home plate umpire to signal a good catch or no catch. And it's the job of the base umpire to make sure that the runner touches all the bases and then cover a play if it happens at a base. That pitch inside, one and oh. So is it his call from wherever he is, if it's 280 feet away, Correct. that the ball's down? That's the mechanic. The I, I, I've got that book here too. Okay. That's a mechanic thing. Inside, 2 and oh. So if the base umpire sees that the ball hit the ground and the home plate umpire says, nah, I didn't see it that way, what happens? Well, it's not the job of the base umpire to be watching the ball with no runners on. Yeah. Unless it's right on the right field line, then he could go grab it. Okay. 3-0 no count on Jewett. Wind up and the pitch. Hmm? There's a strike. Three and one. Oh no. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> Taking a, we'll take a look at the upcoming zone five schedule in just a moment. There's a strike, full count. Games going on today. Ashland at Hudson, of course. Bill Ricca at Natick is the other lone game in zone five. Tomorrow you got Bill Rick at Newton, Lowell at Ashland, Waltham at North Chelmsford. And actually it's Ashland at Lowell. That game got switched as this is hit in the air and that'll drop into shallow center field for a base hit. And Jewett is aboard with one out. A one out single for Jewett. Balowitz will step in. Talked about this last night. Jewett is hitting about 300 points higher at Legion than he is at high school. It's the weather, Larry. No, he says it's the coaching. Oh. Anyway. He says they mess with his swing at Holliston High, and they don't mess with his swing down here. And I just want to mention Waltham and North Chelmsford also playing a doubleheader tomorrow. Ooh. Wind up and the pitch. Outside. Single admission at that game? I believe so. All right. It's a very secretive profession, umpiring, you know. People at home may not realize it what is. goes on. Chaves set to deal outside. Kind of like a magician. He never tells his tricks. <laughs> so, Tools so the, of the trade. Yeah, so the home plate umpire, does he have the first 90 feet fair foul and the base umpire, the other whatever the number of feet? The 2-0, a swing and a miss, two and one. Well, we got a whole paragraph here, Larry, from the P-Buck oh. manual. Oh, all right. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry I asked the question. You asked. Uh, well, you know, I was always curious. You know, sometimes you see home plate umpires called balls. Foul. You read it right here. No, I'm not going to read the book. <laughs> I got an encyclopedia. Home. That's because you're wrong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Three and one now on Balowitz. Uh, just one last question. Yeah. What happens the first 90 feet and then after? Who's, whose call is it? The first 90 feet? Yeah. The, the, the plate umpire always has fair foul. 
if the base umpire is in position A at first base, he can grab one on that line, if it's close. That will fill up the count if, on Balowitz. If it's behind the bag, going down to the foul pole, the base umpire could opt to grab it if he's in position A. Okay. But it's his call. If he doesn't want to, then the play guy will grab it. Okay. Leg lift and the pitch. This is going to take a couple hops up the middle and get past the reach of the third baseman. And Balowitz is aboard with the single. Second straight hit for post 77. Jew it up to second. Balowitz to first. Cole Glassburn to the plate. I think we would call this right now a hit parade. Well, we do, we do have two straight. <laughs> two in a row. Or a rally. Well, that's now three hits in the game for post 77. Cole's a gap hitter. He's not likely to hit a ball out of the yard. Ryan trying to shuffle Jewett back to second base. Cole Glassburn's going to have none of that. He says too much time in the box. Chaves set to deal. And this is hit in the air up the right side, and it is... Going to drop in for a hit. Here comes one run into score. A second run being waved around. Balowitz is going to score. And it's going to be a two RBI triple for Cole Glassburn. A six to one lead for post 77. He tattooed that ball over to left field. And it was pretty close to that fence. And the speedy Cole Glassburn gets all the way around to third base. Right field, you mean. Right field, excuse me. That'll bring up Ben Fink. Sean, Sean Jewett's a very emotional player. And one of these days, he's going to say something to the wrong kid and get himself in trouble. You love a fiery kid. There's a strike. Three straight hits now. Yeah. Only had one before this. It rains and pours, I'll tell you. The 0 1. Breaking pitch in there, four strike two, 0 and 2. Nice pitch. I'll bet you Chaves did not expect Glassburn to clean that ball out. He ripped it. Coach Obid was talking before the game as whether he should move Glassburn up or down in the order. And he said, Cole's been getting two hits a game. Down low, 1 and 2. I'm moving him up in the order. Good decision on Jake Obid's part, the first year manager. Well, at 10 and 0, I don't think he's made many wrong decisions, that's for sure. He's no Don Zimmer. Well, you got to be old enough to know who he the is. The 1 2. There's a strike. And that is going to be out number two. He knew it. That'll bring up Andrew Sternick, the second baseman. So Cole Glassburn has plated two more runs for post 77 with a two RBI triple. And he still stands at third base with two outs and Andrew Sternick stepping in. Inside. Would you call that uh, last pitch to Fink a knee buckler? Got fooled on it. <laughs> yeah. Fooled, frozen, however you <laughs> want to phrase it. Certainly not what he was expecting to have pitched to he wasn't him. Wasn't too happy about it either. And this is hit high in the air to center field and caught for the third out. But post 77 plates two more runs, and they lead it six to one as we head to the bottom of the fifth on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the fifth inning, Hudson Post 100 coming up to the plate, top of the order. Sam Stout, Michael Ryan, Michael Chavez, or excuse me, Shaves. Trouble with that name. Dom Cavanaugh continuing on for post 77. He's pitched. Four very solid innings so far this evening. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad, Steve Watson on the call. Cameron Tabo on camera. Wind up and the pitch. And this is chopped up the left side and 
That is called foul. And Stout just kind of stood there. Looks like he knew it the whole time. Well, he knew it, and more importantly, the plate umpire knew it. Well, he's lucky the plate umpire knew it. Yep. If not, then you might have a problem there. I'm sure if uh, it ended up being fair and he didn't run it out, Coach Chasen wouldn't be too happy with him. Kavanaugh set to deliver. The 0 1. Up high. One and one. Inside. Two and one. Kavanaugh set to deliver. Leg lift and the pitch. Swing and a miss. Two and two. So far in this game, Kavanaugh has struck out seven. That one in the dirt. Full count. The decisive pitch, and it's a walk. So Hudson will have a man on with no outs, and that'll bring up Michael Ryan, the shortstop. Michael Ryan. Ryan so far today has singled and was hit by a pitch. Runner taking off from first. The throw up by Jewett is off the mark, and the runner is safe. A stolen base for Sam Stout. One and oh, the count on Ryan. Well, it'll be interesting to see what the, the leash is with Kavanaugh if he runs into any struggles. Leg lift and the pitch, down low. And the runner taking off once again, the throw to third, this time they got him! Sean Jewett, you can test him once, but if you test him twice, it might be trouble, one away. That's just pure greed right there. It certainly was. Like I said, you test him once, get second, test him twice, try and steal a third. What are you thinking? Exactly. Yeah, although granted they are down by five runs, I guess you gotta take some chances, right? Yeah. Say that's a little too desperate. Larry says no. My Spanish isn't that good. Here's the 2 0. Outside. Well, especially with Kavanaugh struggling to find the strike zone a little bit. You wonder what could have been if that runner didn't try to steal third. Well, he just made it easy for Dom Kavanaugh. Certainly did. This pitch is in there for a strike, three and one. Michael Ryan would like nothing better to get even with Dom Kavanaugh after taking that ball on the shoulder. Three one pitch outside. Not going to get the chance. Second straight walk by Kavanaugh. That'll bring up Michael Chaves. It looks like o Coach Obed wants to talk with. Dom Kavanaugh. Could we have a pitching change? We'd have a Mensa meeting out there. Ah, it looks like, <laughs> yeah, just a meeting of the minds out there on the mound for now. Michael Ryan, a pretty darn good base runner, but they've already seen Jewett's arm. They're down five runs. They played safe, I think. Well, they certainly didn't play it safe with their last base runner. Right. And they've seen 
how aggressive Sean Jewett is trying to throw the ball around, throwing down a second in between well, innings. And he's not just aggressive, he, he's actually good. Yeah, and back picking, and see what Dom decides to do with the pickoff move. And this is fouled away. So as I mentioned before, for last game, he would go to his belt, I think, if he's going to pick over and stay at his chin if he's not in a set position. Kavanaugh working from the stretch, runner on first, one out. Strike two. Oh, the uh, hitter didn't like that at all. I thought he said no. I thought it might have grabbed the inner corner. <laughs> I don't think you get to say that. The 0-2. And that was a little too inside. Very quiet Hudson bench. Care a pin drop right now. Kavanaugh takes a look at first and is set to deal. And this is fouled away. Count remains one and two. Checking at first, runner back safe. The one, two. Outside, two and two. At this point, Sean Jewett shouldn't be thinking about throwing down at first base. I think it might be more of a threat. Where's the runner going to go? Breaking pitch, slightly high, full count. Question is whether Hudson's going to send Mike Ryan with a 3-2 count. Yeah, that pitch down low. That's the third straight walk for Kavanaugh. It's now two on with one out. And the only reason there's an out is because Sam Stout got caught stealing, trying to go to third. Tyler Ogerholm will step in. Big opportunity here for Hudson to maybe get back into this game. I'm sure Dom Kavanaugh's tired. He's shown his share of pitches, the hot night. Well, you wonder if Luke Gustafson is available. We'll fly him in. That pitch in there for a strike. He was Johnny on the spot last night. Inherited second and third with no out and was able to get out of a, a pickle to close the game out. Just outside, one and one. Kavanaugh looking a little frustrated out there. Jewett asking the home plate umpire, was that low? <laughs> Obviously low, he called it. The 1-1. One, one. Fouled away, 1-2. One and two. Kavanaugh certainly taking a little bit more time between pitches at this point. Working Are you from implicating the he's laboring? Perhaps a little. We'll see. Down low. Two and two. He's missing. He's missing low. For a regular MLB game, Steve, uh, how many eggs do the umpires sort of rub up? It varies. Usually you get five boxes. This is hit in the air over to left center. That'll drop in for a hit. Here comes one run to score. And the lead runner behind him is going to be stopped at third. It's a six to two ball game. An RBI double for Tyler Ogerholm. Well, just like that, Hudson has something going. And it you gotta 
Think back to that runner. They tried to send a third on in an attempted steal. Could have been a six to three game right now. But you'd hate to see that think play come into play towards the end of this game. Still only one out in the inning, and now you have two in scoring position for Matt Gerard. Gerard is 0 for 2 so far today. Well, Dennison and Tomaselli were used last night, so they're persona non grata for tonight. Down low, 1 and 0. I haven't seen anyone warming for post 77. No, and Dom Kavanaugh for the first time this season is showing some bad body language. Here's the 1 0. And this is going to take a couple hops up the middle and get through into left field, and another run is around to score. An RBI single for Gerard. It's a 6 to 3 game. Uh, you know, here's what I predict. They're going to pull Kavanaugh and have Glassburn come in and pitch. That's what I think is going to happen. So that'll bring up Tommy Goyette. Michael Chaves comes around to score. Osier home up to third. And they're still going to roll with Kavanaugh, hoping he can get out of this inning. I don't know. Sean Jewett's not going to go out there to relieve Kavanaugh. So Glassworm would be the likely uh, suspect. Inside. The 1-0. And this is up the left side. Glove by the third baseman. Fink to throw home. They got the runner in a pickle. Back to Fink. And now Kavanaugh covering home. They get the tag on the runner heading home. Now the throw to third. And it's a double play. Unbelievable. What a way to get out of this inning. Hudson with an opportunity to do a whole lot more damage. And they get the double play of a lifetime. And that'll be an interesting one to score for sure. Well, I mean, it was a perfectly executed rundown by Fink. I mean, I mean, he faked out the run or something, but that was the play to make. I think the out ended up being five to one, then back up to third to the shortstop, Cole Glassburn, who was covering. So five, one, six, double play, I guess we'll score it. We'll certainly have to review that one. In any case, it's a six to three ball game. Post 77 with the lead as we head to the top of the six on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the order for post 77, Chris Lennox, the new pitcher for Hudson. He comes in for Michael Chaves, who ended up pitching three and a third of an inning, giving up four runs. And three of those were earned. So now it's Chris Lennox into the ball game to try to stop the bleeding for Hudson Post 100, who find themselves down six to three. But Post 77, their goal is to add a little insurance here. Nick Calabrese, Brendan Grover, Dom Cavanaugh do up. And he'll get a piece of this one over to left field, and it's caught. Goyette with the catch, one away. Took the circular route there, didn't know which way to turn. Cole Glassburn warming up in the bullpen. That'll bring up Brendan Grover. Post 77 will be at Lowell tomorrow night. That'll certainly be a tough matchup. We could go there if we wanted to. One Take and over oh. the press box like last year. Nearly get thrown out. <laughs> you know. The 1-0. -oh. Two and oh. It was poetic justice, though, getting in that press box for the state championship game, wasn't it? Oh, absolutely. Not having that guy saying, get out of here. <laughs> the 2-0 -oh pitch. I mean, I wouldn't blame them if they threw just you up. You up, right. And they better wash the windows up there. <laughs> Two and one. It's something they don't believe doing, that neck of the woods. 
This is fouled off, two and two. One out, no runners on, four post 77. Set to deliver is Lennox. And this is hit in the air over to center field. And that is going to drop in front of the fence. Brandon Grover is going to round first and head to second base. And it's a stand-up double for Grover. That's how he was hitting them at the beginning of the year. Well, he got a good piece of that one. Dom Cavanaugh will step in now. Post 77 in business with a man in scoring position. Wind up and the pitch. Down low. Gerard just able to keep it in front of him. Lennox set to deal. And this is hit in the air over to center field, and that is going to drop in front of the fence. Here comes Grover around to score. It's an RBI double for Dom Cavanaugh. Seven to three, post 77. He, uh, you know what he just said? Take that for what you did to me last half inning. I got one back that I gave up. And there you go. Drew Rancatori steps in. He's got power. Had three home runs for the Hillers this year. Swiped about 13 bases, which if you see him run now, you won't believe it. But he did swipe about 13 bases. Was the team leader. That pitch just low. One and oh. I'll tell you something that really has saved post 77 in this game, just how disciplined they are defensively. And this is popped up and it is going to be dropped by the third baseman. You saw trouble all the way on that one, didn't you, Steve? He never had that. <laughs> no, he lost it. Never had lights. it. Yeah, he lost it in the lights. So Rankatori will reach on the E5. So much for practicing yeah, under he, lights he, at your home field. He, he was drifting the whole way on that. Yeah. He's like, oh, I don't want this one. I better go, I better look like I want it. So instead of two outs with a runner on second, it's or a runner on first, it would have been. There is no, it would have been uh, two outs with a runner on second. Instead, it's one out with a runner on first and second, and Sean Jewett coming to the plate. And the pitcher didn't want any part of that. Oh, usually the pitcher won't get there. a pop up like that. No, <laughs> they, they usually usually let the catcher run out as far as. There it is. And he gets a piece of this one into left field. It goes. Here comes another run around to score. The throw is cut off. And post 77 has played it at another run. It's 8 to 3 as Dom Cavanaugh comes around to score on the RBI single by Sean Jewett. Yeah, he's just tearing it up he's in so Legion good. baseball this year. He certainly is. And he gets the job done once again. That's his second hit of the day. He's two for four overall. Well, now he can trash his high school coach because he already graduated. <laughs> Balowitz is going to send this one up the right side. It's bobbled by the second baseman. In the right field it goes. Here comes the lead runner. And yet another post-77 run will score. Drew Rankatori comes around to make it a 9-3 to three game. Drew it up to third. And Balowitz reaches on the second error of the inning for post-100. <laughs> You having fun now, Tom? Absolutely. <laughs> well, post 77 certainly is. Well, we've seen everything. Glassburn tripled his last time up. A stand-up variety. Two RBI triple. We'll see what he can do here. Down low. Probably nothing. He's going out there for the next half inning. Cole knows I love him, but, uh, you know, <laughs> his predictions. You and him do have a great back and forth, I, know. I must He's, say. I know. Very it's entertaining. It'll be good when he goes down to D.C. in the April, August. That's outside. It gets away from the catcher. The runner from third thought about coming to score, but Jouette's going to head back. Smart decision there. 
That would have been catcher on catcher crime right there if they collided. That it certainly would have. It also, a smart move to not throw that. Yeah. I think we've uh, perhaps learned from our first of the bases before, right? Yeah. Two uh, greedy yeah, catchers. You've already made two errors in this inning. So. I'll tell you what, this game started off a little slow, but these last two innings have been pretty crazy. Yeah. Up high, 3 and 0 now on Glassburn. Um. Wind up and the pitch. Yep. It's a walk. That'll load up the bases for post 77. There's still only one out in the inning. Ben Fink coming to the plate. I'd like to send out a shout out to all the uh, nurses working at New Wellesley Hospital tonight. Or even the ones that aren't working tonight. <laughs> yeah, I heard they're big fans of our broadcast. Yeah. There's a strike. All the way from Acton, Massachusetts. Lol. The 0 1. Strike two. It's kind of a weak strike call, Steve, wasn't it? It's kind of, I'm tired. I just want to put he, up my right hand. He thought about it. Okay. Yeah, it was it was close. Yeah. And they get paid 80 bucks for this. I'm not going <laughs> to. One and two. I'm not going to let it rip with my right arm. Well, this game almost two hours old. Yeah, I, honestly, if <laughs> this game were 2-1, if it was closer, then maybe that's not a strike call. But... Let's raise it's 9-3. <laughs> yeah. There's the one, two. That's fouled off into the backstop. What do you say? They get paid to uh, call outs and strikes? Correct. And open the window a little bit if the game gets out of hand? It, it, that's called situational umpiring. Uh-huh. The one, two. Oh. Down low, briefly gets away from the catcher, but the runners will stay put. Lennox set to deal. He Outside. thought about it. Yeah, he, he thought about <laughs> taking a hack at that one. Well, it's a full count, a walk here, would score a run for post 77. Nowhere to put him. There's ball four, and another run will come around to score. It's a 10 to three game. Hey, Ump, would you have rung him up just uh, for, <laughs> no, for that, not being that, aggressive? That pitch was way inside. I, that wasn't my question. <laughs> would you have just rung him up for good measure? No. Okay. It'd have to be closer than that. Yeah, it's got to be a lot closer than that. Sternick will step in. Oh, Post 77 is batted around. Outside. Getting a little tired. Mosquitoes are starting to rampage. That's why we have off. That's why I'm getting some off. And that's why you're grabbing it. <clears throat> or trying to, anyway. Oh. And this is going to be hit up the middle. It takes an awkward roll. Everyone's safe. A run will score. That grass is slow, and Ryan had to just eat that ball. There was nothing he could do. An infield single, and yet another run comes around to score. The ball just died. Number 19, right fielder. Nick Much like that Lincoln. pass ball back here. Right. Yeah, it's just, oh, well. That grass just killed that ball. <laughs> That'll bring up Nick Calabrese. First pitch is a ball. Well, they've turned the lineup over, so are we in the sixth inning now, top six? We are. That's what the scoreboard says anyway. That's fouled away. Let's talk about the scoring for post 77. One run in the first inning, one run in the second, one run in the third, one run in the fourth, two in the fifth, five in the sixth. Every single inning. Yep. Doing damage. Still only one out here in the sixth as this is hit in the air over to left field. Nope. And that is going to drop in for a hit. One run is in to score. And it's a 12-3 game. 
An RBI single for Calabrese. And post 77, honor roll. That'll bring up Brendan Grover. That ball was tailing away from their left fielder, and right off the bat, you could, well. He never had a shot at that. No, if he was uh, Ronaldo Nehemiah or something. Yeah. Uh, that that ball medalist. was in the perfect place. Yeah. Outside. One and O. Oh. Well, Larry, exactly what you said. When it rains, it pours. Oh, yeah. When there's lightning, there's thunder. <laughs> Oh, this Inside. kid's earning his money. I'll, yeah, I'll Gerard, I'll Matt, tell you. Matt, Matt Gerard has, his, his mommy has says, quite a day. Before you touch anything, you go in the bathtub with Mr. Bubble. He's really. Oh. There's a strike, two and one. Brandon Grover has had a pretty good day. He's walked twice, sacrificed. And had a double and scored a run, also drove in a run. Actually a pair of runs. There's another strike, two and two. Dom Cavanaugh on deck just salivating. Can't wait to get up to the plate. Almost had a home run his last time up. That's fouled away. Because that's the type of kid Dom Cavanaugh is. Well, I think if you're uh, post 77, you're thinking about scoring three more runs right. and reserving some pitching. Yeah. Yep, you do have to play again tomorrow. Yeah, put the mercy on. And then you have a full week next week, too. So It's uh, 9 o'clock exactly for those that are listening in live. Up high. Full count. Walk here would score a run. Because the bases are loaded, right? <laughs> <laughs> Fouled oh. away. The battle continues. Up. Oh. The umpire calling for more ammunition. We got a big budget for Legion baseball, right? Four balls a game. <laughs> <laughs> you got jokes, Larry. No, no, I'm just tired. And this is hit high in the air over to center field. And it is caught. Runner from third going to tag. The throw in is a good one, but it's off the mark. And another run scores. It's a 13-3 ball game. So Brendan Grover with the RBI sacrifice fly out. Ben Fink comes around to score. Andrew Sternick up to third. Calabrese up to second. Dom Cavanaugh to the plate with a chance to end the game. Well, Lennox still has got his head in the game. He was there backing up home plate. The game way out of hand. There's a strike. And just to think that Hudson had the tying run at the plate last inning. Yes. <laughs> and Kavanaugh gets a piece of this one over to left field. And that is going to drop just in front of the fence. One run is in. Here comes another run trying to score. And he will. And that is going to be a two RBI double for Dom Kavanaugh. And that's going to be it for Lennox. I think that might be it for the ball game. We'll see. And the home team get its last uh, crack? They do. Ah, all right. So, so Kevin, I was waiting like a hungry lion in the on-deck circle, ready to cream one. He did just that. Probably two feet from, two feet short from going out. That's it. So we will indeed Both have of his hits in the Barely missed. <laughs> yeah. Come right. Out. We will indeed have a pitching change for Hudson. 15 to three is the score. Dom Cavanaugh driving in Andrew Sternick and Nick Calabrese. And post 77 has racked up nine more runs in this inning. Unbelievable. We'll take a timeout. Pitching change for Hudson. You are tuned into Ashland, a Legion baseball on either WACA TV and Ashland or HCAM in Hopkinton or HCAT in Holliston. Continuing on in the sixth inning. 17-16. That's how bad baseball has got. Drew Rankatori steps in. No. Or actually, do we have a pinch hitter here? We do. It's we have a pinch hitter for post Lawrence 77. Tang. It's Lawrence Tang, or as his teammates call him, Larry. Yeah. Well, they were going to pinch hit me. Yeah. 
just dressed me up in a uni. You might as well at this point. Yeah, really. He's out of Belmont Hill. He's 14 years old, believe it or not. And I talked to Coach Kayam before the game. He said, we got him for another five years. He said it that very greedily. Line up and the pitch. Tank fouls this into the backstop. One and two. He was just down in Alabama with his Nakona club team. You know, Alabama's not the greatest place in the world. I think that backstop was there, Larry. Cole Glass was going to toss that ball right at you. Yeah, well, he's going to have to catch me first. <laughs> Fouled into the backstop. You the battle continues. No, he's the slowest kid in Hopkinton. <laughs> right, Cole? Yep. Okay. That's by his own admission, Barney Rubble right there. Oh. Set to deliver, inside, two and two. I think we have nurses in from Mass General Hospital listening in on our live broadcast tonight. Did you know that, Steve? Hello to all listening in on our broadcast. And this is hit in the air over to left field. And see, uh, did that go out? No, it dropped just in front of the fence. A run is going to come in to score. Lawrence Tang has his first hit as a member of post 77. That's going to, oh, the umpire is chewing both dugouts out. An RBI single there to drive in Kavanaugh. 16 to three is the score. Sean Jewett will step in. Now, I don't know what was said. Did you hear what was said? And this is hit in the air over to right field and it is going to drop foul. Oh, if he took second base right there, or, that would have been or no, ugly. That was fair, excuse fair ball. me. Fair ball, all right. It's out of my sight line, but it is indeed a fair ball, so a single for Jewett. I'm glad Coach Kayam uh, did not have him ripped for second base because there's that certain unwritten rule in baseball. You don't want to run up to score too bad. And that was a two-run homer by Tang. Did they or, give him? No, he was on second, then he scored on that, on that last oh, one. All right, there it goes. Excuse well, me. I yeah. think the reason uh, post 77's dugout went crazy is because that was Tang's first hit. That was that was very close yeah. to that fence. The play down by said there were words exchanged. I didn't hear what words, you know, the bottom line, the game is at hand. The, um, the whole right. home point umpire does not want to be dealing with that stuff. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. Well, that, that's where the excitement came from. Balowitz gets a piece of this down the third baseline, and it's called foul, 0-2. So Tank scores on the Jewett hit. RBI base hit for Jewett that landed in right field just fair. Just fair. And that it, was close. And a great call by the home plate umpire. Right on that line, had it the whole way. And this is hit in the air over to left field. That'll drop in for a hit. It's going to be two on for post 77. That's like a dying duck out there. No carry on that ball. Cole Glassburn will step in. He'll be the closer tonight. No save opportunity for Cole Glassburn. Well, I got to correct myself. That was Tang's second hit as a member of post 77, according uh, to the stat sheet here. Splitting hairs. It was a bomb. <laughs> it was an absolute bomb. That kid's got to feel really good about it. He missed a home run by maybe a foot in or so. And now we see why they have a 14-year-old on the team, because he can hit the ball. Yeah. <laughs> Because uh, he paid the entry fee? <laughs> well, they had 38 tryout for post-77. It was a very competitive tryout. Not everyone made this team. This is a bloop shot and caught by the pitcher. And finally, the inning will come to an end in that sixth inning. 11 runs score for post-77. So the scoring line is 1-1-1-1-2-11. One, 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 and it's 17 to three as we head to the bottom of the six on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Continuing on to the bottom of the sixth, and if Hudson wants to continue this game any longer, they have to score at least two runs in this inning. 
or make that three runs. Oh, please. To get within 12 runs. So the mercy rule does not go into effect. Dom Cavanaugh out there to pitch on. Four post 77. He had plenty of rest it, well, that yeah, last inning. Did. So but there's plenty of restaurants on the way home for the Hudson post 100. Oh. This is hit into center field. That'll get down for a base hit. A leadoff single for Chris Lennox. He's going to have a pinch hitter. I think. Nope. Sean Reynolds will step oh. in. My bad. You know, if I were the coach of Hudson, I'd say, hey, go up there and just swing three times with your eyes closed. Let's go home. Just bunt. That's fouled away. Or you could bunt while stepping on home plate for an yes, automatic out. Yes, you could do that. Or you could bunt and run up the baseline and have it hit you. Could do that. You could. <laughs> And this is a slow roller up the right side, picked up by the first baseman, throw to first. And did they get him? The umpire says no. He's saying everyone's safe. Good hustle. An infield single for Reynolds. That was just the grass having an effect there. And then the Kavanaugh threw the ball towards Jewett, and Jewett caught it, fortunately, before it hit the batter coming up. That was kind of him. So I've always wanted the answer to this question because I got an umpire right here. In T-ball, kid hit a ball off the tee and ran down the third base line after six weeks of coaching. What is that if you did that in this game? <laughs> that, that's called you're out. Oh, you're out? Because you didn't go to first base. Oh. You got to run the bases in order. Okay, all right. I always wanted to know. Uh, but it's it's T-ball. They even have rules there. Drove me a little crazy after six weeks of trying to teach. Well, after them. six weeks of coaching, I'm sure you're ready to rip your hair out. But well, let me show you. Well, uh, well there's a ball spot there anyway, eh? Right. That's one and one on Matt Lowe. That pitch down low. Two and one. Runner on first, no, or runner on first and second, no outs. Swing and a miss there. Two and two. And I remember the kid so. Fondly, Tom and I called his sister softball games this year. And this is foul. The worst play I've ever seen made in baseball history took place at Elmwood Park in Hopkinton, hitting the ball up the tee and running at third base. To the cheers of the crowd, by the way. <laughs> Not the coach. There's a strike out number one. That'll bring up Sam Stout. Well, it's uh, certainly been a uh, interesting game, Tom. It's, it's been a very interesting game. <laughs> it didn't start that it's, way. It's been a tough day for Hudson, that's for sure. At first we had a walk fest, then a hit fest. I thought this would be the three to two, four to two kind of game, but no. Yeah, that's, that's usually how it works, though. Eleven run yeah. inning makes it seventeen to three. Yeah. That was a nice pitch. Even six to three was pretty reasonable at the time. And just that, think, was, that was right down Broadway. That at, pitch at six three. If Fink doesn't make that play at third, then what happens? I don't know. I can't remember. It changed that the whole product. complexion of this game. The O two. He thought about it, and that was close. One and two. I would have rung him up right there if it was yeah, the play down by fourteen run game. Yeah, like. If you don't swing the bat, kid, I'm not helping you out. There it is. <laughs> out number two, strikeout number two in a, this inning for Kavanaugh. Why would you not swing right there? You're down by 14 runs. You have nothing to lose, man. Nine strikeouts for Kavanaugh today. He's got an ax to grind Michael Ryan for that beaner he took in the uh, shoulder and Sean Jewett having a little conversation. They're both fiery kids. Hopefully it's not ugly. Wind up and the pitch. Down low, gets away from Jewett, and both runners will advance. Well, I'm seeing at least Four errors in the game. That's it? From Hudson. Oh. 
but that's not an exact count. I was looking very quickly. I have the exact thing that you do, Tom. All oh. right, we'll go with that then. Did you see that? A little inside. Yeah, but that's the second heat. time he's gone way inside on him. I get, I'm not saying nothing. Uh, <laughs> I don't think that's a good move at all. Tom is putting the fifth. That's right. Not. What's that? Putting oh. the fifth. Well, the infamous Fink play. This is hit foul. Two and one. So post 77 today has scored 17 runs on 13 hits and committed two errors. When they study the history of baseball under the letter F, they will see Fink play. <laughs> but only we'll know what it means. Yes, exactly. There's a strike. And so far for Hudson, three runs on six hits, four errors. I, I hope there are no words exchanged between the clubs uh, after this game. That's got a bad vibe. The 2-2. Swing and a miss. And that is out number three in the bottom of the sixth. And I believe the mercy rule is going to go into effect here. And that is going to do it for this one. And it will. Ashland post 77 is going to improve to 11 and 0 on the season with the 17 to 3 victory over Hudson post 100. Hudson falls to 9 and 3. What a wild game. This ended up being an 11 run sixth inning for post 77. They just did not stop hitting the ball. Nine hits in that sixth inning. Pretty unbelievable stuff from this post-77 offense. Guys, any final thoughts? Yes, you've got to ask Coach Obed about that Fink play. I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> right, well, I'll be sure to do that. In any case, for my broadcast partners, Steve Watson, Larry Sacklad, and Cameron Tabo on camera, I'm Tom Nappy, and we thank you for watching Ashland Legion Baseball on either WACA TV in Ashland or H. Cam in Hopkinton or H. Cat in Holliston. Thanks for joining us. We will talk to you again very soon. Take care and be well.